This is Bill Doyle on Vermont Issues, and uh, I'm very delighted to appear in this panel, before this panel, with Jeb Spaulding, the Chancellor of the State College System, and, uh, and, and with whom I've spent many, many years. How many years did we spend together? We spent 16 years in the Vermont State Senate. I learned so much from you, Bill. Oh. It was a pleasure. We were on the Education Committee for a while together, and we served uh, 12 years on the Government Operations Committee under your leadership. Well, um, and I must say that, uh, as I, having said that, I, I could not have served with a, with a person uh, who, more, more, who worked so hard at this job as Jeb Spaulding, as Thank a senator. You. Thank you, and I'm glad to be here today. We're really grateful to have you here. Um, so I basically am thrilled to have you here because there was an article in the seven days which made me nervous about Vermont State Colleges and I think you're the guy with the answers. Okay. And so um, what colleges and universities are part of the Vermont State College system first so that okay. we have a full overview? That's good and because I, I actually don't remember exactly which what was said in that article so I don't know whether it was referring to the Vermont State Colleges system or to colleges and universities generically in Vermont. In so, Vermont, I think that's what yeah, it was. Okay, but so I can talk, I'll talk about both if Great. you want to. But the Vermont State College's system itself is made up of, uh, I'll do it in alphabetical, actually I'll do it in, not in alphabetical order. I'll start with Community College of Vermont. So we have uh, 12 locations throughout Vermont. Uh, so we like to say there's a community college site within 20, 20 miles of any Vermonter out there. And interestingly, about a third of the courses taken through uh, CCV now are online. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are locations around the state and online. And they primarily deliver uh, associate's degrees and uh, courses uh, and uh, uh, direct uh, uh, job training and workforce development uh, activities for businesses. So for example, at a Global Foundries or uh, Brattleboro Hospital, they'll do programming specifically for the employees. So mm. some of them are students enrolled in, in, in a, an associate's degree program and some aren't. And if a place like Community College of Vermont, uh, it's, you know, it over the decades, uh, they have had a somewhat older uh, student body. And that's still not abnormal, but an, an increasingly a number of young Vermonters coming out of high school are going to CCV because it's the most affordable route to get their college education. So that's community college. Then we have Vermont Technical College, which uh, offers both associates and uh, bachelor's degrees and one master's degree program too in computer science. Uh, and Vermont Tech is known mostly for its engineering technology programs, whether it's mechanical, civil, electrical, uh, computer, and, uh, and healthcare? Uh, yeah, people don't really realize that you know a lot of its enrollment and growth in recent years has been in nursing and allied health. And uh, that's probably going to be a continued growth area. And they also, through history, have a, a, a dairy management program. It's the only yeah. dairy program actually in Vermont now and still has a, a working farm uh, in the, at the Randolph campus. Oh, nice. Vermont Tech also has a campus in Williston. Uh, and it's, it, there's this one dorm there, but it's primarily a commuter campus uh, and is obviously in a growth area there. So uh, Vermont Technical College uh, Associates and Bachelors and also does a lot of specific workforce training for employers in Vermont. <coughs> then we get to our more, uh, our, our more residential four-year bachelors and master's programs. And you know we used to have three of those. Uh, two of them have been unified in Northern Vermont University. So. We have Northern Vermont University with campuses in Johnson and in Linden. It used to be Johnson State College and Linden State College. And if we have time later, we might get back to why did we do that and what do we hope to accomplish with it, because it's a pretty big move. Uh, and then uh, finally, Castleton University down outside of Rutland in Castleton, Vermont, uh, a, a really wonderful uh, university. And it's, it's, it's uh, bachelors uh, and masters uh, and uh, has offered new programs and has you know international students from like 35 countries and huh? uh, I think it's 27 I think NCAA uh, <coughs> athletic teams and uh, so it's, it's quite a wonderful place. Mm. So that's the constellation. Some people are confused that uh, well is the University of Vermont part of the Vermont State College system? No. And it's not. It's it is a public college. It's independent. 
uh, it's you know student body undergraduates probably 75 to 80 percent out of state students at the University of Vermont, which is the reverse of what you would find in the Vermont State Colleges system. But it's got its own governing body and so forth, so it's not. And then we have just in the constellation of colleges and universities, uh, we have uh, you know a, a, a large number of independent or, or private, private ones. Colleges. So everything from a Norwich to a Champlain to a Goddard to you know all kinds of them around the state. And yeah, Leamington. Yeah, but we're Castleton Community College, Northern Vermont University, and Vermont Technical College. So, Jeff, would you tell us some of your priorities of the Chancellor? Well, I mean, you know, it's all about trying to serve students. Um, but my priority is, is pretty simple, uh, and that is to actually put our colleges and universities on a stable financial foundation. And that's not easy to do in today's climate. Um, you know, people might not realize that there are 25% fewer seniors in high school this year than there were 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So if, if that's your traditional customer base, it's getting smaller. And what that means is the competition between the colleges and universities out there over a, a, a decreasing customer base is intense. And the average discount rate at uh, the independent colleges is about 50%. So if you were to say, gee, look at that expensive tuition of 40000 the average person is paying twenty, like half of it. And you, you know that probably can't go on forever, but that's the competitive world we're in. So it's like one, you know, you've got fewer fewer people graduating from high school. We hear about that all the time in terms of the K-12 system, fewer students and mergers and all that kind of stuff like that. Well, obviously that means there are few, fewer people graduating from high school. And furthermore, you might be interested to know that actually, in 2016, was the smallest number of births in Vermont since the Civil War. And 2017 had fewer births in Vermont than that. So, you know, when I look at it and go, okay, well, those are the students that are going to be going to college, you know, 17, 18 years from now. So is this going to get, is the population sort of trend going to reverse itself? It doesn't appear that that will be the case. So it, if, if Vermont is losing population, does that have anything to do with what you're talking about? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. We're not the only ones losing population. I mean, this is a big, big trend across the country, certainly in northern New England. Uh, you know, Maine and New Hampshire have, have the, the same dynamic. We don't have a lot of immigration up here. I, I, I wish we would, and I appreciate the fact that it, at least our governor, Governor Scott, uh, welcomes people from other parts of the, the world, and we'd like them to come, but they often, you know, are not anxious to move to Vermont. Uh, and, you know, it, it's not, and actually, another challenge that we, we have. So we don't have a lot of immigration. And, uh, you know, a lot of times these days, we go through trends where people want to be in cosmopolitan areas. And back in the 60s and 70s, they wanted to be out in the hills of Vermont. And uh, at, the, at the moment, uh, people are gravitating towards the city. So you, if you were in Pennsylvania or Georgia, and went to the rural parts of those states, you would find basically the same dynamics in terms of their, their populations. And they're you know, all having to adjust uh, uh, to meet that. F for, it's a good question, though, but it's, 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 so it's the population is, is decreasing, particularly in young people. I mean, if you were to look at you know, the projections for how many people are going to be in Vermont that are over the age of 65 in the next 10 years, that's going to, to, that's going to double. So it's like the old people, o older people, let me put it that way, they're more and more, and they're living longer, and, and, and thank goodness they're being more vital for longer periods of time. But that, that, pop that segment of the, the population is getting bigger. It's on the other end when it's getting smaller, and it has a lot to do with a lot of different things. It's not just that people don't want to be in Vermont, but Vermont happens to be relatively highly educated, even though in that upper echelon, though, not uh, in the lower. Oh yes, I oh, mean I this is one of my questions. Really, is why is Vermont supporting so much elder care when it's not having its own young people put in college? Right. That well, part to me does okay. not make sense. If you want young right. people here, you have to give them a certain amount of respect, right? right? So that they feel like. Right they can afford to have children or they can afford to be part of the community because they're respected. Right. So the Vermont State Colleges system, the ones I mentioned, uh, we are the de facto extension of the pre-K-12 system into the post-secondary years like nobody else. I mentioned the University of Vermont, but you know others too. Back in the day, Champlain College was 80% Vermonters. It's now 80% out-of-staters. 
You know, Vermont State College's system, we're like 85% Vermonters. And Half know, of our students are the first in their family to go to college. And, you know, uh, and nearly half of them are Pell eligible, which means they're of modest income. And we're proud of that. So I, I don't really have anything to, to say that, you know, we're not trying hard. We take students, I mean, I have so many stories of students that come to Vermont State Colleges that couldn't have gone to college anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And they come and they don't always succeed. And, you know, by the way, if you're going to be taking students that, you know, uh, have haven't had a family culture of going to college and realizing that it's not easy and you're going to be homesick and you know they're going to push you a little bit and so forth it's it's harder for them and so we have to build up a support system but you know just as a as an example i mean if if you looked at the students that are going to middlebury college which is one of the colleges in vermont every one of those students is academically prepared every one of them has uh you know a, a, almost every one of them has a as an emotional support system at home uh, and they've got the resources to, to really support them down there. And that's how many different. are from in-state? Yeah, not very many. And why is that? Because the in-state students well, because aren't prepared like that, right? No, I don't think so. I think, I think actually, um, you know, I mean, th the mission of my institution, the Vermont State Colleges system, is for the benefit of Vermont. You know, we're all about Vermonters. Uh, a place like Middlebury is an, it's an educational institution for the world located in Vermont. Right. Its mission isn't Vermont. Its mission is turning out, you know, I don't know what, well-rounded professionals and critical thinkers from anywhere, and they and they happen to be located in Vermont. But our mission is all about Vermonters. And yes, we want to have some out-of-staters, uh, and we'd like to have international students. We like to have diversity on our campuses, not only because it, it helps us financially, but it's good for Vermonters to have a, a more vibrant, diverse community to go to college with. So, you know, why don't, I think your question is, why don't more Vermonters go to college? And it's, it's this is, you know, you're, you are on to something here. Um, in Vermont, we have uh, one of the very highest high school graduation rates in the country. And our results are pretty good. Yes, there are people that are graduating from high school that aren't prepared, but yeah, if you compare- they're, they're always going to have some of that. And, you know, back in the day, we would have said, just let them not go, let them not finish high school. But, you know, there's been an emphasis to try to keep people in high school. My point is that our, our results on any measure compare favorably with those around the country. So we're graduating most of our students at one of the highest graduation rates and relatively performing well compared to other states. One year later, we have a very, very sorry record of sending kids to college. 40% of the students that are graduating from high school do not go to college. Actually, they don't go on to any kind of post-secondary education. So here, exactly. I would say they're not going into an apprenticeship program. No. They're not taking you know, an associate's degree. Uh, they're not getting a credential, a bookkeeping credential, or anything. And that's a problem. And by the way, you know, 60% of the students in the lower economic status group do not go on to any kind of post-secondary education. So that's right. a huge equity problem we have in the state of Vermont. But, you know, one of the difficulties that our counselors in high schools have, at least this is my personal observation, uh, is that they're so busy dealing, putting out fires uh, and, you know, dealing with, with, with immediate critical situations that they don't have the time to spend helping students think about their post-secondary careers. Wouldn't that and be I'm, beneficial for it your would, it group? Would, it would, it would <laughs> be incredibly <laughs> Let's do it. it I don't I, understand. I met, I met somebody uh, very recently who is a post-secondary guidance counselor in Middlebury. And uh, whether this is true or not, I don't know. But she told me she was the only counselor, post-secondary counselor in the state at a high school. Uh, and, I you would know, believe that. that. And, and, you know, and, and, and by the way, she was introducing me to a student and a mother of, of a mother, a single mother and a student, nobody had ever been to college before. And there, right. she's, she is, her mission is to try to help her, you know, go to college. And uh, and, and again, I mean, I, I'm using the word college loosely here because it sure. could be an apprenticeship or something else. Although, you know, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, virtually 90% of the jobs, if not 95% of the jobs that have been created in this country since the Great Recession of 2008 and 9, have required a college degree. So, is it is it is it a true statement that not everybody needs to go to college? That is a true statement. But most of the jobs that are being created, and particularly the higher level jobs, require, require a college degree, associates or bachelors. And isn't that fundamentally linked to our 
ability economically as a state? I mean, don't those two things like... You're absolutely right. So I don't understand why that would be like on the forefront of legislators. Like, right. why don't we have school counselors pushing Vermont students to have the support systems right. in place yeah. when they get to junior year that they say, I'm going to Castleton. Right. Right. I'm not going to go do drugs. I'm not going to get right. pregnant. Right. I'm not going to be right. a, you know, right. deli girl. Well, I think it's, I, I, I Not we, that those we, are bad things. We no, need them. We do. But it's not fair right. to say nobody's got any asset right. that Vermont needs. We have right. to get our taxes done from Connecticut or New Hampshire because right. we don't have I, any resources. The only thing I would differ with you somewhat is, like I just said, we, we have 12,000 students within the Vermont State College mm -hmm. system. Like 10,000 plus are Vermonters. That's and great. half half of them are the first in their family to go to college. So it's not like no, none of them are. It's just that too many aren't. Uh, and I would argue uh, that cost is a big factor in that. I, 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 th I have a funny thing about it because all of my girlfriends, there were five of us from central Vermont, went to small amounts of schooling of our own financial situations after we were in pretty not good situations otherwise. I mean, no further of education, no future discussion on anything. Literally just thrown out there like, have a nice day. And so now it's 25 years later, my friend's kids are doing the same thing that we did. And, you know, we were all powerhouses, so I don't understand why we weren't an asset, why we weren't called into education. I, yeah, I'm interested. I mean, it's in a lost asset. I, I hope that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, and you know, I think and it's a by huge the way, lost it asset. It needs to start, you know, you can't wait till 10th grade, okay? You need to start. You know, at the very latest, working with students and their families in middle school. Right. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I, and there are pros and cons to this, but one of the trends you see around the country is, is more states basically offering tuition free college. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, for example, in Tennessee, it's limited to community and technical colleges, two years. Uh, in New York, it's now, you know, if your family, I think it's if, it, if the family income's under 120000 you can go tuition free to any one of the SUNY colleges or community colleges. And, uh, you know, we don't have that in Vermont. But I think, you know, and, and people would argue, by the way, that, you know, in a place like New York, uh, a lot of the benefit of that is actually going to people that actually could afford to pay for college, hmm. but uh, they they're now want to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is limited to $120,000 family income, and for a two, you know, two, two worker family, that's not. It sounds like it, but it's not a high income family. So I'd say, you know, higher income than that don't get to take advantage of it. I still so, think the one percent can afford college. The rest of us still need the can. help. <laughs> no question about it. No, we. It's. It, you're absolutely right. I, I. I don't disagree with that. We have a tremendous equity issue in this country, and I say it's getting worse. It's getting harder for the lower income folks to go to college. Although, you know, at the same time, you know, I would say there are opportunities for people to uh, pursue college or a post-secondary education that they might not be aware of. Uh, you know, for example, um, a Vermonter um, who gets into the University of Vermont uh, and is Pell eligible, so that would mean you know their family income might be you know it varies depending on number of how many kids that are in the family and so forth. But let's say under fifty thousand uh, dollars goes tuition and fee free to the University of Vermont. Now it's not easy to get into the University of Vermont, sure. but for you know those those lower income students to get in, there is no tuition to go there, and we're really trying to up our our tuition in a place that you mentioned, Castleton. Well, they have a, 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 an agreement with Community College of Vermont that you know if you graduate with an associate's degree from CCV, Community College of Vermont, you can continue at that same tuition level at Castleton to try to make it affordable to people. You know, you talk about Vermonters. I'm, I'm familiar with the one. I won't I, I won't name her, but she'll know it if she was watching. <laughs> a student from you know uh, Belvedere, Vermont, homeschooled, uh, went if nobody in the family had been to college before went to Johnson State College, now Northern Vermont Johnson, on a full four-year scholarship from the National Science Foundation. Fabulous. Was she driven? You know, was she, you know, totally. academically able? Yes, she was, but, but she didn't have a lot of family, you know, expectation mm -hmm. or anything else like that. And, and it was a free, free four years, and now she's got like a $200,000 post-secondary 
fellowship out there. With the, I think it's the first one in the state colleges system. I only mention those things because the, the expense, the tuition, we have the lowest state support in the country for our public higher education system. That translates to the highest tuition in the country. And even though Community College of Vermont is our most affordable option, it's still probably the most uh, expensive tuition in the country. And there's a direct, direct link, a direct cable from like the lowest state support in the country to the highest tuition in the country. Because you know, you gotta get your revenue somewhere. And back in the 1980s, Bill, when, when you were uh, you know, uh, in the state senate and I was in the state senate, the Vermont State Colleges got roughly 50% of its revenues came from the state and 50% came from tuition. Now about 15% comes from the state and 85% from tuition. That means Vermonters pay the highest family share of their income to send their kids to college in the country. And there's no doubt in my mind that that's one of the reasons why we don't have a lot of, we have too many Vermonters that are not going on to post-secondary because they think they can't afford it. And in many instances, they can't afford it and they don't want to take on uh, excessive debt. Chancellor Spalding, we talk, yeah. Chancellor Spalding, we talk about some of the greatest challenges as Chancellor. Uh, well, thank you for asking. The, the, the biggest challenges are, are pretty much what I just mentioned, that we get such low state support that we are, we are very, very reliant on tuition. Uh, and you know we have a declining number of customers, you know, students. Uh, we are uh, increasingly facing families. You know, the, the, they tell me that the Gen Zers, which are students that are coming into college now, they are born about the year 2000, uh, and, and, and subsequent are uh, are uh, increasingly uh, price conscious. So uh, they're not interested in going and getting a bachelor's degree to be good good citizens and worldly thinkers, they're going to college because they want to get a job when they get out. And if they don't see that return on investment, I mean, I, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's, that's, that's a current real thrust right now. Students want to know, wait a minute here, if I'm going to go spend four years on tuition, what am I getting out of this? And, um, you know, I think what we would like to have people understand is that you know, when, when we talk about a, a Northern Vermont University, you know, where you taught for a very long time at Johnson uh, or at Castleton, um, they're not just getting a liberal arts education that's going to make them a worldly thinking. They're getting a liberal arts education with a strong link to the professions and with extensive internship and experiential opportunities that are going to help them get their first job and jobs along the way. You know, you have to understand that, I mean, a lot of the, the, the uh, the professions out there that you might think of now uh, probably aren't going to exist in 10 years. So if you just go in a very narrow, um, I've got, a, I've got a, a simple skill and that's all, I, that's all I know, and I'm not able to you know, think critically, and I'm not able to analyze, and I'm not able to work with people uh, and, uh, uh, and, 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 and think broadly, uh, you're going to be stuck in, a, in, in maybe that one area that might not even exist into the future. So the challenges are low state support, decline, declining number of traditional students, uh, very skeptical parents and students, price competition that's very tough, and new providers that are coming in. So, you know, there are like, um, you know, I mean, there are plenty of online providers, and there are, are new uh, for profit institutions yeah. that are coming in, that we should be very skeptical of, by the way. But, you know, we have a ton of challenges. We also have strategies to try to address every one of those. So those are the challenges, and they're big, but we, we also have opportunities. Well, let's talk about the opportunities and talk about what we're doing to do, uh, solve the challenges right. that you, you right. enumerate. Okay, well, you know, number one, an opportunity is the group of folks that Sophie has talked about, the 40% of Vermonters that are not going on to any post-secondary education, the 60% of the lower income group that is not going on to any kind of post-secondary education after, after, after high school. So for us, well, if we could get that from 40% not going down to 20% not going, that's good for them, it's good for the state of Vermont, and it's good for us. We are working very hard on retention. That would be, you know, in, in, in layperson's language, keeping your customers. We have too many students that come, you know, and, and again, we have, we, we take we have our valedictory students. You know, you will remember that at Johnson. We have wonderful students. And how many of your students are turned out to be legislators? A lot of them. They contribute to their community. Significant but number. A significant number. But, you know, I mean, we also take a lot of students that have struggled in school, struggled at home, 
Uh, and you know, they, they come to the Vermont State Colleges and sometimes we don't have the support system that uh, allows them to succeed and they don't, they don't stay. So you know, if we can actually help those students that are now dropping out of college to stay, that's good for them, that's good for the state, and that's good for us as well. Then we're, we need to serve uh, you know, the group of, of, of students that uh, are adults. And you know, there are 60,000 Vermonters that have some college but never completed. Uh, and you know, we're, we're trying to develop more flexible delivery systems, so weekend programs, seven week semesters, online, you know, ways that, that, that Vermonters that can't, you know, they might be working or they might be raising a family, they can't go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning. They need to have some other delivery and, and we're, we're working uh, on, on that as well. Uh, and then we're, you know, we're, we're doing some pretty creative things like, like Northern Vermont University, which is up and running. We have our first class of students there. They're very excited about it. Um, if it wasn't, if it was a, 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 a sort of typical uh, environment where, you know, finances weren't an issue, we probably couldn't have pulled that off. But I think people knew that, wait a minute here, you know, we're, we're, we're committed to maintaining uh, campuses in Linden and Johnson, and we need to make sure that the dollars we do have are spent on things that matter to students. So at Northern Vermont University, with those two campuses, we now have one president. Elaine Collins is doing a great job. We have one CFO, not two. Actually, we have one executive assistant for presidents, not two, on each one of those campuses. And in the first year, just in the transition year, we saved over a, a million dollars in executive management, higher level management expenses and, and salaries and benefits. And you know what we're seeing, which is more exciting to me, is actually increased opportunities for students. So now the professors at Johnson and Linden are getting to know each other. And you know, Ben Luce, who's an eminent physicist and teaches physics at, at, uh, at, at Linden, taught also at Johnson this past spring and loved it. And I believe he's back there this fall. So there's a lot of synergies there. Some of the classes that were too small to run, when we can do them across two campuses, um, are actually big enough to keep running. So more opportunities for students, both in the classroom and some of the extracurricular and, and travel opportunities we have, it, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting. So, um, you know, that's another one. We're trying to, like, be creative and, and do shared services. And then we're, you know, really need to make our case to the legislature that, you know, there is an impact of, like, such low state funding. And it is that too many Vermonters are not going on to college. Well, and I think, well, like you said, too, I think a support system that actually recognized young people in right. Vermont when right. they're young. Right. I mean, because literally, like, I have one girlfriend, I was telling you she was great in calculus, she was the head of her, her um, field hockey team, and no one ever approached her about going to college. Not ever. Yeah, in the whole time that we were at U32. And that was very common. Right. And so, I, I've taken, I'm one of those people who has multiple little bits of classes right. from here and there, and the, the, those classes work fabulously. But for my friends who were educated here and, and feel that they're not actually good enough to go to college, you know, those are the people I would love to see your program actually step up and, and ask. We right. know you'd be great. We, right. we have a place for you. And like you're saying, you know, the legislative asset is huge to have that be recognized as a, you know, this is your economy. Right. This is what is going to make it possible for you to come and retire in Vermont, is if you have educated, sophisticated, you know, helpful people in the community. And there are lots of them here, and, you know, a lot of people aren't, aren't appreciated. And I'm, right. So I'm glad to have this yeah, opportunity I mean, I, to yeah. talk with you about I mean, we it. Do, we, we, you know, I'm not sure this is right, but I'm, I'd like to think that at the, you know, the, the high schools are, are doing a better job of counseling students than maybe they did 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I'd like to think that. I, I hope that's the case. Yeah, me too. It's kind of hard for us because of the high schools, you know, don't necessarily make it easy for, you know, like us to come in. We, they have nice college nights uh, and you no. can go to those, but it's hard. Mm -hmm. A lot of students don't go to that. So, you know, uh, you know we'd like to do our part. Uh, and, you know, w one of the things we, we are trying to do, another one of our strategies, is just to let people know what we have to offer within the Vermont State College system. Because sometimes, 
you know, I mean, it's, it's always going to be the case that, you know, my, my daughters went to 12 years of, of Montpelier Public Schools, and they both went out of state to college. And by the way, neither of them came back. Right. They're, and they're in their upper 30s now, and I doubt they will come back. And they're so, quite successful. So, well, so. they are, but, but oftentimes my, my point there is like, you know, the majority of times once they go out of state, they're not coming back. There are also, there's the minority of times when people go out of state and do come back, and that's great too. But, you know, I see too often people are, are paying more to get an experience out of state when they could have stayed at one of our own colleges. And if they'd gotten a good experience here, the odds are higher that they would stay here and we'd have a better, you know, at a childbearing age where you, you know, it would, it would help our, our demographics. So Jeb, is Vermont an affordable state in which to live? Uh, well, everything's relative. <laughs> and so, you know, compared to uh, where, you know, my daughter is. She is a, a physical therapist at a, at a rehab hospital in in Boston. Uh, the housing. She, she. I don't. Don't think she'll ever be able to buy a house in that area. So I mean, you know, actually, I mean, housing in in Vermont is is less expensive than other places. Post secondary education is more expensive in Vermont. So I would say, you know, the taxes are pretty high here. But I, I on an affordability level, it's it's probably, you know. In most instances, instances in, in my opinion, uh, not really out of line with other parts of the country, and in, 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 in this, particularly in New England. You know, if you go out to the Midwest, in some of those places, you can go, go to a state that doesn't have an income tax. You know, you can go to New Mexico or you know, you know, South Carolina or someplace like that. It's probably less expensive to live there. But we also have to understand that you know we have something like 620,000 people in Vermont, uh, and Vermonters uh, have. Uh, a commitment to a, 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 a desire for a lot of services, and when you try, try to provide that for a small number of people, you know, it does it does cost, and it, it makes it ex more expensive for people. But I, I actually don't think our cost of living is all that out of line. I think our cost of post-secondary education is definitely out of line. Like I said, we have the highest tuition in the country, in-state and out-of-state tuition. And, and it's always yeah. been like that. I mean, when yeah. I was looking at colleges, yeah. you could go to Berkeley for $1,000 a semester. Yeah. So, and yeah. a UVM was 8000 at right. that point. So, yeah. I mean, it's always sort of been that way. But yeah. why aren't Vermonters being looked at as an asset? You know, the, the, um, I have another example of a friend who comes from an old farm family, and he can't read. And we were educated next to each other, okay? And I, I struggled to learn how to read on my own because people, you know, I was special ed. And that profoundly affected me to the point where I will never have confidence in myself as an adult with an education because I was special ed, you know. And that happened to, what, 40 to 60 percent of our working force in the state of Vermont right now. And then those are, your, those are your numbers that you're looking at of who's not getting educated and why is that? And is special ed actually helping us? And are those people actually an asset or should they be sent to Siberia? I mean, you know, what's happening here? Yeah. Are, we, are we appreciating the people who are our assets? And so here's a guy who now can't run the family farm because he's not educated enough. And to whose benefit was that? Was that so that his family would have to sell off the farm in order to afford him existing here in the state of Vermont because he's not an asset? You know what I mean? So it becomes very personal to me and I become um, furious about it because my friends who are valuable to me aren't engaged in a society that they are forced to live in. And that part of it is, um, it's damning to the outcome of everyone. And that part of it for me is so sad because, you know, here's a love. This guy is a love. He's got lovely children. He's a wonderful brother and a wonderful son. And he, he cares about the people in his life. But no one actually cares about him and his ability to participate. And, and that part is, um, you know, that's why I think a lot of people do drugs. Right. Well, so I don't it, know. I mean, it's all I, connected. I, I, Sophie, I have to say, I, I, I would say that the, the people that are working in public education mm -hmm. are doing it because they have a commitment to children and, and families, and they take, they, they're passionate about it. 
Are there people that unfortunately have not gotten what they needed out of the public education system or out of the public higher education system? Probably. But, you know, we're always trying to do our job better. I'm not an expert in special education. I, it's a, I would be surprised if 40 to 60 percent of the oh, students are in special ed. It's 75 percent, actually. I don't. Well, I'm very you can, surprised to hear yeah, that. Yeah, no, I, you I'm can not ask sure, I'm any not sure head of school board. It out, but, yeah, do but, it, uh, please do, because I mean these are the numbers that yeah. have got me so worked up, is because my peers on a mass scale are being swept under the rug, so that people from other states can come in here and live comfortably. And that's fine, except that, you know, Vermont actually has an astounding groundwork right. for survival in difficult situations. We, we live need it in all. A, we need in we a need miserable the Vermonters, we climate. We need the out-of-staters. We, right. need, we need everybody. So, Jeb, before we end this yeah. program, are there, are there any questions we might have asked? Uh, well, there's one other thing I'd just like quickly to mention, that one of the, uh, I think, exciting initiatives that Vermont has done uh, is is our dual enrollment and early college opportunities for Those students. And you know, every high school student now now has a legal entitlement to take two college courses huh. while they're a junior or senior. Furthermore, you know, when you're a senior, you can actually combine your senior year of high school and your first year of college. You might have remembered, Bill, there was something called the Vermont Academy of Science and Technology at Vermont Technical College. Well, now all of our state colleges have something similar. And you know, I remember actually being right here in this studio interviewing a young man from Bakersfield uh, last spring, who, you know, in the middle of uh, doing his taps, was an early early college student at Johnson, was the first in his family to go to college, and he'd done his dual enrollment, and now he's doing early college. And what that meant was, when he graduates from high school, he can go uh, and enter college as a sophomore. Uh, and you know, I've seen our statistics that show that students that are from free and reduced lunch, so a lower income level, that do dual enrollment or early college are 20% more likely to continue on to post-secondary education than if they didn't. So, you know, I'm, I'm very excited and if there are students or parents or grandparents that are watching thinking about, gee, you know, I've got a, a junior or, or a rising senior that are thinking about how they're going to make their, their year more productive or I want to get them to think about uh, you know, uh, how they can better themselves. I hope they'll take a look at our early college and dual enrollment programs. And our website is www.vsc, as in Vermont State Colleges, edu. And that can take you to whatever you want to know. Senator Spalding, many thanks for your contributions today. So nice to see you both. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Yeah. It's really nice to have you here. Thank you. Right, you're welcome. Thank you.